All right, guys. Today, we're going to take a look inside a commercial grade UPS system. How does it work? What's inside it? Why do they break? Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, guys, here on the healing bench where I have other experiments that we're going to get into in future videos. But today we're going to talk about UPS systems and what's going on because, you know, they're, they're not mythical creatures. They're actually kind of simple on the inside, but there's various different types. And I, I think I did a whole entire video on them. This is one of the most common ones that you'll see. So here, let's go through it. Let's uh, show you guys how to rebuild them because you can and let's check to see about wear and tear on the internals and maybe even clean it out because who's to say like how old this guy is and what environment it's been sitting in it could have been sitting in a hot dusty environment um but that's all right so i already pulled out the batteries the front face comes off with just a couple fasteners on the bottom and it comes off and then the outer case is secured by a series of fasteners on the bottom lip so you have to flip it up and then take them out. So first step, take off the front face. Then there's a bracket right there, which has two fasteners, which hold the battery in. So you take that out, the battery slide out as a unit, and there should be just two wires connecting to the battery, but there is a jumper in between the two battery cells. So you can see I've got the new batteries in, ready to get put back in but um, there's a little bit of prep we got to do to some of the connectors and before I put the batteries in I want to check and make sure that the internals on my UPS are safe because if there's a problem I could just be damaging new batteries so the fasteners are already removed from the bottom of this guy this is a 1200 or 1500 VA um, UPS system and the amperage or the VA is actually the rating for the capacity of the UPS system. This is a standard 120 volt unit. It takes two 12 volt batteries, but they are wired in series. So uh, because it's in series, you have a 24 volt configuration and it basically steps up 24 volts to whatever. And then it, um, it chops it up and creates the sine wave when it's being told to do so. So first off, first thing that you can see is this guy is ungodly heavy. It has a massive transformer down here. And uh, this transformer, uh, it acts as probably a step down and at the same time an isolation. It's, it's probably mainly an isolation transformer. But you can see there's multiple taps right here. So there's, there's definitely uh, different voltages that are coming off the transformer. So by it isolating, that means that whatever's plugged into this guy is also going to be a wee bit safer. So UPS systems are also good at isolating um, wall mains from whatever's plugged in. And that, that can be good for a variety of different reasons. This is the battery cavity. So there's a battery, uh, or this is the front faceplate. This, this large ribbon cable. And then these two here are the two spade connectors which connect to my in-series 24 volt battery. And then down inside, take a look, there is a uh, EMI filter. And EMI filter is there to mainly make sure that a lot of the noise that's generated here does not go back out to mains. So mains comes in, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So mains comes into the EMI filter. And then from here, it goes to the transformer. Because if you have really garbage waveforms coming into a transformer or going out of the transformer, the last thing you want is for that uh, interference or the noise from the choppers to go back out on your AC mains. And any device that's plugged into that circuit would also um, pick up that noise, which could create problems. So that's why it's got an EMI filter here. And this main control board here is massive. So 
The transformer has a series of secondaries. Your secondaries come out over here, and you can see we have a series of control relays. I've got two transformers right over here. Uh, obviously, your software is going to be right here. Notice a series of fuses. Of course, we are going to have to have a lot of fusing. These are going to be your battery in. So over here is going to be your secondaries, and it's going to get rectified into DC and high voltage DC. And then uh, probably step down to 24 volts DC so that it can charge and maintain the batteries. And let's see, I think, yep. So you can see these connectors right here. And look at this, see how that connector is a wee bit loose, this black one? When this goes back together, you have to check those because 24 volts batteries, you know, batteries, the, it can pull a lot of amperage, especially if this guy is like maxed out. It does have overload uh, current protection, but you still want to make sure that all your connectors are really tight. So even uh, the jumper that I took out, you can see I got the pliers right there. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp down on the spades a little bit. And by crimping down on the spades, uh, you're going to make sure that it fits really tight on these spade terminals. And obviously I have to check that one too. Because that one feels a little bit loose. You can see over here we've got, those are our breakers for the outputs. Oh, okay. Just checking. So those are our breakers for the outputs. Uh, you can see we have USB or we have RS-232 serial. And that's my IEC input. This one here is my jumper. So if I want to expand the capacity of this guy, remember, all it needs is 24 volts. Now you can, you can run batteries in a, a parallel series configuration. So this right here would be series. So this terminal right here connects to the, the UPS. This terminal here connects to the UPS, the jumper goes right here. That gives me 24 volts, but I could run them in parallel. And the VA of this guy would increase exponentially because the VA is the a period of time it can distribute the energy of the batteries. And the thing is, the more batteries we have in parallel, that's the more capacity. So that's why it's got this little plug right here so that you can connect a battery bank into this guy and it can run for much, much longer. So some of the things that I look for on these UPS systems is all these electrolytic capacitors. You want to make sure that they're not leaking. And you can see right here, I've got a uh, fuzz that's up in here. So this board has got to get blown out. It's going to get cleaned up. All these terminal connections right here, they're all going to be checked. And mind you, it's not plugged in because these right here, these uh, heat sinks can be live. They can be hot. Oh, actually, it says right here. Risk of electric shock, hazardous live parts. So see, I mean, I've shocked myself on heat sinks before. You would think that they're they're not at high voltage potential, but they most certainly are often on these guys. So uh, I check all the electrolytic capacitors, make sure that everything's good, make sure that there's no lint balls on here, clean it up nice and good, make sure that the alarm speaker, it doesn't have any lint inside it, you can see that one there, is a little bit dirty. And also, you see how these guys are all secured down and they also have the goo. That's to make sure that, you know, through its rough life, vibration stuff, that all these components stay down because they have a lot of mass. Whenever you have a lot of mass, anytime there's shock or trauma to the device, those components are sh shaken loose from the, the PCB. So usually your large capacitors, which you can see, they squish these two between the heat sinks. Uh, that limits their vibration. But all these transformers and probably most of the relays, especially if they're sizable, are going to have um, schmoo on there to help hold them down. So guys, that is a pretty good run through of the UPS system. Um, probably the last thing you really want to check is this fan. Make sure that it spins nice and freely. You can see I spin it with my finger and let it go. That's a good sign. As soon as I take my finger away, if it stops immediately, that fan needs to be replaced. But uh, I'll clean up this board. I'm going to tape those two batteries together, tension the terminals, and then pop them back in. And then this guy has to charge. And once it's charged, then after probably five or six hours, I will do a load test on it where I plug something in and I yank the power cord. And when the power cord yanked, that's when you'll know 
if this board up here is doing its job. So AC has a frequency in the United States of 60 hertz. And in Europe and many other places around the world, it's going to be uh, 50 hertz. So that's 60 times per second that waveform goes up and down. And what happens is in split seconds, what's going to happen is it's going to monitor for a incoming waveform. And when that waveform ceases, before that next 60 hertz cycle comes through, which is actually really slow, this guy is already kicked on and it's already uh, running off the battery and it's, it's creating its own AC sine wave before that cycle is allowed to uh, deplete. So it measures it, it sees it, and when, as soon as it sees a lack of the waveform on the AC sign coming in, that's when it invokes the chopper drivers right here and they start creating their own AC off the internal batteries. So that is inside of a heavy duty, very nice commercial size, 1200 VA UPS system. Anyway guys, it's just a brief overview, as much as I can do because I don't have a camera person and I don't have a tripod. In other words, I'd show you guys step by step how to rebuild these guys and how to clean them up, but you guys get the point. Really not that complex. Just make sure you do a good inspection of all your terminals and your electrolytic capacitors because if this guy is in a large uh, heated environment and under a lot of load, well, it puts a lot of wear and tear on these electrolytics and they do leak and when they short internally, it creates all sorts of other problems and it can even pop some of these fuses that you guys seen up here on the main board, usually near the battery incoming terminals. But um, anyway, guys, that's UPS system in a nutshell. If you guys like it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and please, guys, subscribe.